Welcome to the Sudoku tutorial. This tutorial explains how to use the website, which we will call Su for short, and to distinguish it from the game of Sudoku, for which we have several other tutorials. Su is a free online Sudoku program which is designed to help you learn, play, and improve. It generates puzzles, lets you enter puzzles from other sources, and provides tools and guides to make solving them less frustrating and more fun. I'm going to go into my Chrome browser now to get started. Sue so has been tested with the latest versions of Chrome, Firefox, and Microsoft Edge. It probably won't work with Internet Explorer or work well on your phone. It was designed for use on a PC. First off, to get to Sue, type in the web address smmcroberts.net. That's the minimum you need to enter. It will take you to my home page where you can access other free programs I've written such as uh, my 3D Rubik's Cube Solver, my chess player, interactive circle of fifths, my poetry books and other writings, etc. But if you go that route, you will need to click on the Sudoku icon to get to Sue. So the more direct route is to add on the end here slash Sudoku and the banner comes up for a few seconds. Later on I'll show you how to turn off the banner from the settings tab over here. Sue shows the Sudoku board on the left and a set of tabs on the right. I like to use the browser command control plus on uh, Chrome, I think it's similar in other ones, to uh, get it up to 125%. Starting at 100 in Chrome, I click twice and it gets me to 125%, which fills up the window, helps me to see it. By default, Sue starts you out on the intro tab. This is a bit of a cheat sheet for those coming into Sue without having seen this tutorial, so we'll skip over it and go to the load tab. In the settings, you can uh, tell Sue to skip the intro tab and I'll always start you off in the load tab. The load tab is where, as you may have guessed, you load a puzzle or, if you're a registered login user, resume a puzzle in progress. I've logged in on this other instance of Sue, so you can see what that looks like. I, it tells me I have three puzzles in progress at three different levels and how much time I've spent on each clicking a resume button would load the puzzle at the point that I left it. Registration has other benefits as we'll see. It's free and free of privacy concerns as well. You don't even have to provide an email address as we'll see later. Back to our unregistered session. We have three choices in loading a puzzle. First, we have uh, we can have Sue generate a puzzle for us at one of seven levels. We can paste a puzzle in from an external source or one saved from Sue in this standard format. Or we can manu manually enter the givens of a puzzle directly on the board. So if you have one from a book or a newspaper, you can uh, put that in that way easily. But let's go through these options in more detail one at a time. When you have Sue generating a random puzzle, that's exactly what it does for the first two levels. Easy, Very easy and easy. It creates a puzzle on the fly, so theoretically there's an infinite number of those. For the other levels, Sue pulls a pre-made puzzle from its database to save time. It has 10,000 puzzles of each level until you get to the advanced levels, where we have several hundred advanced and several dozen very advanced available at this time. Starting in the hard level, you can ask Sue to find a puzzle with a particular technique in it. 
This is helpful when you're trying to learn that technique. What do the levels mean? The levels correspond to the levels in the Tutorials tab. So here you see those same uh, categories, very easy, easy, medium. So for instance, a medium puzzle will use at least one of these techniques, and probably one or more of the techniques in the preceding levels. But it won't need to use any of the techniques in the more advanced levels. Back to the Load tab. We'll pick an easy puzzle to start with and click Go. Sue generates the puzzle and then displays the techniques summary. This shows you the techniques Sue used to solve the puzzle and what you will see if you go through the guided solve. These are also the techniques you will probably need to use in solving the puzzle on your own. If you click OK now, you can start solving the puzzle at the beginning with just the givens shown on the board. But if you want to start with a partially solved puzzle, you can select one of the techniques and enter which occurrence of that technique that you want to uh, solve up to. Then when you click OK, Sue will present the puzzle solved up to that point, just before that instance of that technique occurs. When learning the more difficult techniques, this is a good way to advance directly to where you can practice or observe the technique. For now, we'll just hit OK. This takes you to the Tools tab, where you'll spend most of your time when solving a puzzle. We will go over the Tools tab in, a, in detail in a moment, but let's finish up on the Load tab first. You'll notice that Sue has placed the puzzle that it just generated in the standard format field here. The format is simply the givens for the puzzle with each digit represented, representing one of the cells from left to right, top to bottom, with zeros or periods for blank cells. If we click this option, we can copy this using control C and paste it into external programs. Or you could save it somewhere on your computer and load it back into Sue at some point if you wanted to do that. Also, if we were to mess up while solving the puzzle, we could come back here, click this option, and click Go, and it would reload the puzzle from the beginning in case we wanted to start over. Of course, a puzzle from another source can be pasted in here. Sue accepts either zeros or periods to represent the blank cells. Some programs use one, some use another. Our last option allows us to enter a puzzle's givens directly on the board. When we click Go, clears the board, gives us this message that after closing this message, enter the givens on the board, when all givens have been entered, click the Go button again. So we would click OK, come over here. We can hover over the board with our mouse. And by default, using the number keys on your keyboard above the QWERTY keys, you can enter one, two, three. However many givens you have, we're not going to fill in the whole thing now. And when you're done, you would click Go. Of course, this will tell me the puzzle is invalid. It only had three numbers, which is what we expected. Back to the Load tab. No matter which of the three options you choose above, and we're going to go back to this, you can have uh, Sue shuffle and renumber the puzzle for you. This will give you a very different looking puzzle, but with, with the same solving techniques needed. So let's generate an easy puzzle again. Back to the Load tab. And now we're going to reload the same puzzle, but we're going to tell it to shuffle and renumber the puzzle this time. And there we go. It's a very different looking puzzle, but has the same techniques to solve it. The Tools tab. 
Before we go into the tools, let's take a look at how we enter numbers on the board. We already touched on how a cell turns green when you hover over it, showing it's ready for input. Note that cells with givens in them do not turn green, since you can't enter numbers in those cells. You'll also notice that there is a lighter green color underneath the cursor. There are nine such rectangular areas in each cell corresponding to the positions of the candidates. So if I position to the upper left corner of a cell and click the left mouse button, a little number one appears. If I click again, it disappears. If I click in the middle, it would be a five. However, there's already a five here, so it warns me that I can't do that. This would be the two, the three, I can't do, four, five, six, seven, I can do, eight, I can't do, and a nine. With the mouse over the nine, I can either click the mouse again, or I can hit the delete key, or I can press the uh, number nine. In this case, number nine happens to be the solution to that cell. So Sue tells me I don't really want to delete candidate nine from A1. And this warning is a setting you can turn on or off. Let me go to the number seven. If I enter the seven here, it will delete it. If I hit the delete key, it'll delete it. And if I click on it, it will delete it. So three different ways of deleting it. If I want to enter a big number, I can just click the uh, number on the keyboard above the QWERTY keys. And I'm going to hit the delete key to get rid of that for now. Uh, what I also want to show you is, if you want to indicate a locked or hard candidate, you can underline or prime a number. So let's put in our little number one here. And now if I hit the U key for underline, it bolds and underlines. Hit it, U again, it un-underlines it. If I wanted to prime it, put a little, hit the apostrophe key and it puts a prime sign or apostrophe sign and bolds the number. Again, I can hit the apostrophe to delete that. Okay, down here I see uh, twos could be hard candidates. So if I just go to the two spot, click the U, click the U, it'll underline it and enter the number in one shot, saving a step. In addition to hovering over the uh, board to position where you want to enter a number, you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard. So if I hit the if I hit the right uh, arrow key, it's going to the right. You'll notice it skips over the givens. And when you get to the edge of the board, it wraps around to the next line. If you go up or down, it'll also wrap around. So it's just another way of getting around on the board. OK, back to the tools themselves. It's at the top, we have a summary of the board showing each number, how many times it occurs in big numbers slash small numbers or candidate numbers. That doesn't make too much sense till we fill in all the candidates. So let me jump ahead a second and click on fill in all candidates. There we go. If you hold down one of these buttons, let's take the one, it will highlight in red all of the numbers, all of the one numbers in this case, the big ones and the small ones. It will also show you conjugate pairs of which we have none, very unusual for number one, and uh, BVCs, bivalue cells. The cells only have two numbers in them. So here we see B1 and C9 have are bivalue cells that have a one in them. If we look at 
let's say number eight here. You see, it only has one BBC, but it has one, two, three, four conjugate pairs, which are shown in red lines connecting them. So, in other words, in column H, there is only two eights, so they make up a conjugate pair, and they are connected with the red line. As it says up here, these are press and hold buttons, so I had to actually keep pressing the mouse button down to display this. As soon as I lift up, the display goes away. But if I hold down the seven and the seven button and then I slide off of it, so I never lift it up my mouse button on the seven, it'll stay here. So that way I can actually uh, click on two and highlight two numbers at once. So let's say I want to see the seven and I see that there's a four in one of the by-value cells with a seven. So I could click on the four as well. And now I'm seeing all the fours and the sevens. When you want to get rid of it, just click on it. It goes away. The, under the Show column, you can choose what you want to show when you click on one of these buttons. By default, everything is checked. But you may want to not care about big numbers. So in this case, the big number threes are not shown, or not highlighted rather, only the small numbers are. You can say I don't want to see conjugate pairs or BBCs, whatever you want to do there. And those settings can be saved in the settings when you save settings. BBC button will show you all the by value cells regardless of the numbers. So that can be useful when looking for remote pairs and things like that. Let's move on to the next green button. We have highlight wrong cells. This is something you can use to verify that the big numbers you have entered are all correct. When you hold it down, it will display in red any wrong any big numbers that you have entered that are wrong. For any that it finds, it deducts a point from your score. But if you have no wrong numbers, you can just hit this to verify that you haven't gone off track and it won't cost you any points in your score. Next is highlight house on hover. If you check that and then you hover over the board, it will highlight in gray that cell's house. So here on I1, 4, I can see the house is all of row 1, all of column I, and all of block 3. And it will just re show you the house wherever you move the cursor. If you want to see more than one house highlighted at a time. Instance, let's do the six here. You can hover over that six, press the enter key on your keyboard. That will lock that in place. And then you can go to another spot and highlight its house. So here I can tell right away that A, eight and C8 are the only possible places a six could go in, uh, in block six. But with the six and C5, I can see right away that the six goes in A8. So in other words, this is just a handy way to help you visualize your cross hatching. I'm going to turn that off now. And when you want to get rid of all that highlighting, you click remove all highlighting. Okay, we've already seen fill in all candidates. If for some reason you want to get rid of all the candidates, you can click that button. The uh, score keeps track of the time you've taken to solve the puzzle. So if you have to go do something, you can click the pause button and it will stop the clock. When you're ready to be go back to your puzzle, you can either click resume here or really anywhere on this image and it will show you 
this the boarding once again and you can continue right where you left off if you get stuck the hint button will give you a hint so here it tells me there's only one possible number go and sell f4 enter a big number there and if you still can't figure it out from that <laughs> even though it's pretty obvious since there's only one four in there uh, you can give it get another hint which in this case just gives you the answer enter the big number four in cell f4 and you can just go ahead and do that you don't need to close that message right away and you can close that hints uh, do deduct from your score usually the the hints are in three parts so they give you a very general hint and then more specific hints so each part of that hint costs you a third of a point if you go all the way to give me the answer it's a full point deduction but it can help you from getting frustrated the undo is a control z which is you know you just hit control z on your keyboard or you can come over here and click the undo button in this case I took that four away and put all the candidate fours back that entering that four had eliminated if i do a redo it puts the four back and gets rid of all the four candidates again to solve a single cell in this case when you're real frustrated and there's one cell that you just can't figure out you can just hover over that cell and press the s key for solve on your keyboard and sue will put the solved number in that cell. That deducts a full point, of course, from your score. So far, everything we've been talking about has been in entry mode. Sue also has a drawing mode. If you click on drawing mode, you now are not able to enter any numbers, but you are able to, to draw on the board. The default type is manual. There's three different types. In manual, there's three types of drawings you can do. One is you can click on a candidate and it will color it for you. It will color it in this candidate color. Notice the blue. Then it will automatically switch to the alternate color. So now if I click on another candidate, it's orange. Now if I click on another one, it will be blue, etc. If you want to just do everything in one particular color, you can click on the locked button. And now it will just keep it will just keep doing blue. The other thing you can do is highlight an entire cell. You do that by clicking somewhere where there's nothing in that cell. So if I click here, I get a yellow highlighted cell. If I click here, I will get a blue one because here it works the same way. It automatically alternates between these two cell colors unless you lock it. So now if I lock it, I'll get all yellow and it won't automatically switch. You can also draw lines. You draw a line by clicking the mouse, holding it down and dragging to where you want to go. Then lift the mouse button. Here the lines also alternate. It assumes that you want to alternate between uh, strong and weak links. So the first color will be solid. And the alternating color will be dashed. And that's how it indicates strong links versus weak links. Actually, this would be a weak link, but for the purposes of my demo, we'll pretend it's not. Again, you can click uh, locked, and then you can just draw all one type of color. 
If you have auto straighten lines on, which I do, it will straighten the lines out for you. So if you do something like, oh, I want to go from here to here, it only matters where you start and end. It will draw a straight line between those two points. The other types of drawing are simple coloring and X chains. I have another instance of Sue open here where I've got uh, a puzzle that's just ripe for simple coloring. And if I click on a three here, it will draw the simple coloring. In other words, all of the conjugate pairs, strong links from threes, And in this case, what I might do next is hold on the three. And I'll, I spot a three here outside of the simple coloring, which sees two different colored threes. So I know that I could delete that three. That's an advanced, advanced technique, but I want to show you how to do that since we're talking about drawing. In order to do that, if I just click on the 3 right now, it's going to highlight it, or it's going to try to do simple coloring on it. So I need to go to entry mode. Every time you want to enter or delete a number, you have to be in entry mode. Notice that the drawing stays in place. It helps me to see, okay, yep, I can verify there's a blue and there's a orange, two different colors. Notice how things are turning green now and I'm hovering because I'm in entry mode. Also, when you're in entry mode, the border is blue. When you're in drawing mode, the border turns green. Okay, let me delete that. And then go back into drawing mode. And I wanted to show you too, you could hide this. When you hide it, it's still there. So when you unhide it, you can still see it. To actually get rid of it, you would clear all drawing. All right, I'm going to put this three back in now to show you X chains. And X chains work the same way. You click on one candidate. <laughs> you have to be in drawing mode. Okay, notice the green. I'm going to click on this nine here. And Sue has automatically drawn my X chain. So a strong link to this 9, and then a weak link to that 9, strong link to that 9. And this 9 also has a surrogate weak link to this 9, and a strong link to that 9. So there's my X chain. This one is not productive, however, because there's no 9 that sees two different colors, uh, or sees the, both ends of the, of the X chain. But that's how that works. Another thing to note about drawing is if I undo, it's going to undo the whole X chain. But if I'm in manual mode, and let's say I've drawn a bunch of lines, and then I decided, oh, that's all well and good, but the second line I drew is incorrect. And really, I wanted that to be a uh, strong link. I wanted it to be blue line, not a green line, for whatever reason. The point is you can't just delete a line. You either can go back with your undo. Uh, by the way, when you're in drawing mode, control Z undoes a drawing. When you're in entry mode, control Z undoes a number that you entered or deleted, whatever. So always pay attention to that green or blue border and which mode that you're in. Um, so I could undo the last things I did, but that's not going to do me any good. I really just want to get rid of this line and keep everything else. So let me re redo everything. Redo all. What you can do in this scenario, where we want to just get rid of that line, is let's clear all drawing. And don't worry, when you clear all drawing, it's still in your undo history. So you could redo it all. But let's undo 
let's clear all the drawing and let's redo that first line and redo that second line. Now this is the line we want to get rid of. So instead of doing an undo, we're going to do a delete. What delete does is an undo, but it removes that command from your undo history. So now if I do a redo all, everything is back except that second line. And now I can make sure that I'm on a blue and I can just draw the line that I wanted. And I'm good. One last thing to note about drawings is you can change any of these colors. Just click on them and your browser's color adjustment will come up. So you can change these colors however you want to. Click OK. And those colors can be changed, any one of them. When you do your save settings, it will save the colors that you entered for next time. Okay, that's enough about drawing. Let's go back to our original instance of Sue. And let's clear all the drawing here. Go back to entry mode. And let's move on to the guided solve. Sometimes when you go into guided solve, it will detect that you have candidates that don't really belong there. And in order for it to guide you through solving it, it's just going to get rid of those in order to avoid confusion and give you a proper guidance. The guided solve is especially useful for learning how to solve a puzzle. It will take you step by step through the process, highlighting the board as needed to illustrate what it is doing. In addition, links are provided at the introduction of each technique to the Sue tutorial that explains it. Just click the start button to begin. Um, and as you ex would expect, the guided solve deducts a point from your score for everything it shows you. But you can switch back to the Tools tab at any point and resume entering things on your own. So here it tells me it's going to, it is entering big number 7 in cell D2, which it highlights for us, based on solve single possibilities technique. And obviously that's a single possibility because 7 is the only candidate that could go there. So we hit resume, it pops that 7 in there and goes on to the next thing, which is to clear out all the candidate number sevens from D2's house. So it's highlighting all those cells, and in red are the sevens that it's going to delete as soon as we hit the red or hit the resume button. Now it's found another uh, single possibility in cell D4, which is a five, enters a five, and then tells us it's going to clear out all those fives from its house and it's going to enter big number five in A6 because we just got rid of the hard candidate's mate. Um, so when we entered this five, that automatically deleted this five, which was a hard candidate or locked candidate with this five. So since that five's gone, this five has got to be there and so on and so on and since this is an easy puzzle we're not going to get much other than single possibilities full houses and we won't see crosshatch technique here because we already filled in all the candidates and so on and it'll go all the way um, if you want to go fast you can just hold down the enter key and watch it solve the puzzle for you. And this becomes more useful when you're learning more advanced techniques. Okay, once you've solved the puzzle, or really at any time, you can go to the Results tab and see your results. At the top, it will show the results for the current puzzle. It shows the level, number of givens, difficulty rating. If you click on show rating details, it will break down how it came up with that rating based on the uh, techniques 
their levels, how many there were, giving you a total. Tell you how much time you spent on the puzzle, how much you've completed it, the deductions that were made for help that you took. You can show the details here. So I used that S solve key. I looked at one hint. I tried to erase a candidate that was the solution to a cell two times and I used a whole bunch of guide help. So I get a total of 60 deductions. So my overall grade is zero. Um, logged in users will see their result history here. We go to the results here. We see by level, easy, medium, very advanced, the number of puzzles that I've solved, the average rating of those puzzles, uh, average deductions, and average score, and average time. So this is where you can try to improve your score by having fewer deductions and having a higher average score, obviously. The Tutorials tab gives you access anytime to Sue's Tutorials. If you're in the middle of solving a puzzle, you may want to use the uh, pause button. Not in, there we go. Before going to the Tutorials, so that the time does not count against you. The Tutorials consist of verbiage on this side and the board on this side, which will be used for illustrative purposes when links are clicked on this side. You can click a paragraph number to highlight the paragraph to help you keep track of where you are. Underlined, dotted underlined words have definitions which will pop up if you hover over them. Here's an example of clicking on a link and it displaying something on the board. Here's another example, and so on. One thing you can do is if you uh, if you've clicked on a link, you can now hit the tab key to move to the next link. And when you hit enter, it will be the same as uh, clicking on that link. So you don't have to move back and forth to the mouse and the keyboard. So here it's highlighted the 1 at B3. If I hit tab again, it goes to the next link. And if I hit enter, it will perform what that link is saying, mainly visualizing that cell's house. The other thing you can do is turn on narration. And then you sit back and can listen to the uh, narration and it will it will automatically click on the links as it goes eventually you will get to the section of the tutorial called your turn where it will ask you once that link is clicked to perform some action to fill in the answer once you've done that then the rest of the tutorial will become available to you. At the end, you can go to the next tutorial, go back to the previous tutorial, or click on Contents to pick another uh, tutorial altogether. When you're done, if you close your browser tab, it should take you back to where you were in the Sioux interface and get back to the puzzle. The Settings tab is where you can set most of the options that we've previously discussed. Here you see the defaults, but you can change them as you like, and then click Save All Settings. Note that this uses cookies on your device in order to remember your preferences, but no tracking is done. So if you were to go to another device, obviously it wouldn't remember your settings 
from one device to another. Um, what I like to do, because I have a numeric keypad, and I usually use the fill in all candidates, so I'm not doing a lot with entering candidate numbers, more just with erasing them, is uh, I switch these two around. So I use the numeric keypad to enter big numbers, because I can do that more quickly, and I use the keyboard for my more rare uh, entry of little numbers. Shift keyboard is uh, using the numbers above your QWERTY keys, but holding down the Shift key if you want to use that to enter uh, bigger little numbers. Probably makes sense if I'm going to switch this to switch that. And mouse, you can decide you want to enter big numbers by clicking on the position of the mouse within the nine null sections within a cell. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you might want to do that. You might want to come in here and switch this around when, between when you're entering candidates and big numbers. You can mute all the sounds uh, when you finish a puzzle. Sue lets you know it by playing some music. You can skip the welcome banner on startup once you've seen that. No reason to spend four seconds looking at that each time. You can skip the introduction on the startup, go right to the tools tab. I recommend doing that. In fact, I usually have all of these things checked. Um, showing the summary after you after you load a puzzle, you can turn that off if you don't want to get a clue as to what's coming. And you can tell it not you can tell Sue to go ahead and allow you to erase a candidate that is actually the solution to the cell. But if you do that, you're going to get in a fair amount of trouble. So I usually leave that one checked. Below that, there are the, all of the techniques that Sue uses for solving, for giving hints, and for the guided solve. You can uncheck these if you wish. You may get into trouble and you may tie Sue's hands to such an extent that it cannot solve a puzzle. But you can experiment with this as you wish. After you've mastered cross-hatching, for instance, I usually uncheck these first two so that uh, Sue will go right ahead and start with uh, filling in all the candidates when it's doing its hints or guided solve right away. Because I know how to cross-hatch, so I don't need to look, look at that. Another thing that where this might be useful is if you only want to learn through the medium techniques. You could theoretically uncheck everything underneath here except for TDP, which would catch everything, and use Sue that way. All right, that takes us to the login tab where you can log in if you're already registered. You can ask for a uh, password reset or if you forgot your user ID, uh, you can put your email address in there and click this button, put in the code and you're set to enter a new password. But first you have to register. If you haven't registered, you can put in any name you want here, uh, make up a user ID and password. The email address is optional, but if you don't put it in, we won't be able to help you out if you forget your user ID and password. Um, your password is encrypted. We don't know what it is. And the email is only used for the purposes of resetting your, your password. Or if you forget your user ID, we don't sell it. We don't share it. We don't look at it. You're, you're free to enter that. But again, it is optional. And you can register for free uh, forever. And you get those benefits uh, that I already mentioned. And in addition, registering will 
allow Sue to always give you a unique puzzle that you have not seen before when it goes to the database, uh, assuming you haven't seen all of them before. This ends the Sue tutorial. I hope you enjoy Sue. It's been my labor of love for over a year of intense programming. If you encounter issues or have suggestions for improvement, please contact me, Steve McRoberts, via the Contact Me link on my homepage, smcroberts.net.